So we're back to scripting this week, and that's sort of weird, because I haven't done one of these in a while. But I just want to say before the video, if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe. There's like a very, very large percentage of people that actually watch these videos that don't go and subscribe. So if you do like the content and want to see more of it, then, you know, hit that subscribe button. It boosts my ego and gets me closer to parental acceptance. And uh, yeah, just thank you very much. All right, so I did a video recently about YouTube, and it made me think about cards I haven't actually done strategy guides on. I scroll down my channel, and one big boy that's missing from that list is Miner. He's probably been the longest standing card in the meta game right now, boasting a massive 34% usage rate. That's only on the Mega Minion Poison and Barbarian Barrel. The reason Miner have stands throughout a ton of metas is his overall versatility, and today it's exactly what we're going to be going through. His main purpose is to slowly take down towers through chipping. Now this can be done in multiple fashions. Firstly, in a literal sense, he can totally be your starting player within a game. If you have no other move to make, simply send your Miner onto the tower. He'll threaten to do 448 damage if your opponent leaves him, or will instead make that opponent expend Elixir to get the game rolling. Secondly, he can totally be used as a win condition in himself. Paired with something like Poison, he has a large damage potential over the course of the game, considering he's only free elixir. And lastly, he can also be used for near guaranteed damage closer to the end of a game. If your opponent's tower is around like 200 damage, it's very easy to send in a miner and get that final little bit of damage off to win you a game. Punishing investments with this is always a good idea too. Sending in a lone miner will of course grant you that 448 damage for his low elixir cost, but he doesn't have to be alone. As we referenced before, adding a poison spell with him can disrupt the planned defense of your opponent and leads you getting even more value. Not only that, he also pairs well with a lot of units, especially ones with low health but high DPS. His large 1000 health pool allows him to add a buffer to these units, hence enabling their higher DPS onto the crown tower itself. As a punish play against an investment, this is awfully dangerous to your opponent and will force them into a potentially expensive reaction, and such ruins their planned push. This concept also works on a counterattack, proving the miner's versatility once more. If you've just defended with a swarmy unit, you can now add in a miner so those units pose a much bigger threat. If the swarm was just something small like bats, then it forces your opponent to actually having to respond when all you've done is add a simple free elixir mini tank. The amount of usages to miner are pretty much unparalleled in most other units, but hey, it doesn't even stop there. His ability to pop up wherever you like means that he doesn't always have to attack the tower. Zooming across the arena to attack a princess, and then even move onto the tower, grants you more value than you would imagine. It's a surefire way to interrupt your opponent's game plan and get you extra elixir value. The most valuable example of this is against the almighty elixir collector. A central collector will be denied 6 out of the 8 elixir it produces by a miner, meaning it only makes 2 back. A deep collector will be denied 7 out of its 8 elixir, only making 1 back. These trades are a plus 1 and a plus 2 respectively for the miner. Doesn't sound great, but that's just in the case of its most basic form. Imagine you use that plus 2 trade to spend on some free bats. Now your opponent has to either take the damage or lose elixir in defending. That's an ultra threatening play and can win you games alone. There are a few pathing tricks you can do on offense too. The notorious P.E.K.K.A pool works well when running giant decks. This disallows an invested P.E.K.K.A to actually get defensive value onto your giant, and hence giving you a cheap and easy defense whilst pushing in. Along with this, you can also manipulate units into following the miner to behind the tower. This works well when you have support incoming, and want them to connect onto the tower without being distracted. Finally, we move on to a slightly niche usage, that being defensive plays. He isn't the best unit on defense, as his stats are significantly lower for being able to go anywhere in the arena, but he does do a job. He'll fully defend things like bowlers with the help of the crown tower, which is a positive 2 trade for even a mainly offensive card. Overall, the miner is just pretty nutty, and that's why he's been in the meta for like the longest time. Never has there been a set of balance changes where I thought, oh well, miner is totally dead this month. He's just so versatile, and everything we've discussed today is available for just free elixir. I would like to see this card get a small nerf in the future. Nothing insane, but maybe like a 5% to his HP or damage or something, just to trim his usage rates from being literally insane, and encourage people into using other cards. Although, there's no real other card that substitutes miner perfectly, and that's probably the real reason he's so popular. Nothing else spawns this kind of unit at any point on the arena, and maybe a rival card introduced into the game is what we actually need to calm the miner's rates. Anyway boys, that's all for today's video. Thank you a bunch for tuning in again to learn how on earth you use one of the game's most versatile cards. And apart from that, peace.